Okay, we're back in here in the garage with the four Taurus, my nemesis. Yes, the nemesis. But I think we finally found the problem with this vehicle. Uh, I showed you in the one video that I was replacing the brake lines and stuff in the back from a proportional valve back on the back. So it has all new lines, wheel cylinders and everything. So everything's like, okay, everything should be fine. I could never get the thing to bleed. I just get little dribbles when pressing on the pedal. So, you know, I'm like, maybe I just got a lot of air in the lines and I just can't, you know, I do this mainly all by myself. I did have a little help from my mother. She lives with me. She just lives on the other side of the wall. So when the compressor kicks on, plus she works their chip, you know, I wonder how she sleeps there sometimes. But anyways, let's get back on point. I kept on having problems. Couldn't ever get her to bleed, get little dribbles coming out of the bleeder. But on this front wheel up here, I'd have full on pressure, but nowhere else. So I was starting to think proportional valve. So I bought this brake fluid bleeder from Harper Freight and, and it's what it does is an air pressure and then it sucks the brake fluid out and just really wasn't still getting anything. I'm like, what the hell? So I took the lines off from the master cylinder. I wanted to check the proportional valves to make sure that, you know, they were right. I don't know really know how, I know how a proportional valve works, but I don't know the internals on how this one works. So what I did was took off those lines and then I went to every line on the vehicle and started sucking on them. And then I took my finger up to the lines that went to the, to the not the proportional valve, but the master cylinder and put my finger on it and everyone had the same kind of suction so that's kind of lead to tell me in my diagnosing of this what's wrong with this vehicle that there's nothing wrong with the proportional valve or the lines cool so i took the master cylinder off which is just take off your lines and there was two 14 millimeter fasteners on this 994 taurus two 14 millimeter fasteners two not four Took them off, pulled the master cylinder out. Now where the brake applies into the master cylinder, there's a clip there, and I pulled that clip out, and then I pulled out the pistons and the springs or whatever, the pistons inside that thing. And this is what I found. Minus the cut, since I cut it off, since I, you know, I'm gonna be taking this thing in to replace it anyways, you can kind of see that those seals are not perfectly round anymore. So it's allowing brake fluid to go between the two pistons and not giving off the proper pressure to the proportioning valve and probably, you know, just causing all sorts of havoc. So the issue here today is the master cylinder. She is bad. This is the first time I've ever came encounter with a bad master cylinder. I've replaced them before, but They've already been diagnosed and the people couldn't afford the shop to replace it. So they brought it here, brought me the part, I put it on, called it a day. But this is the first time I've ever had to diagnose a master cylinder problem. The process that I went through to diagnose the problem, is it correct? Is it right? Am I on the right track? I don't know. But it did lead me to the master cylinder. And I did not want to throw, I think this is about a $45 part with the 18 or $15 core. But, you know, you just don't want to throw parts at a vehicle. And this is what this kit thought I was doing at the back end. No, I'm trying to get your brake system back up to factory specs. <laughs> he was fine with just getting the front end fixed. We're going to go up and get a new master cylinder. And then I, at the end of this video, I will give a review on this brake fluid bleeder from Harvard Freight with now what I think will be a fully functional, good brake system. Because before I wouldn't know, I, this thing's junk. Other than to pull fluids out of like a power steering reservoir, brake fluid reservoir, you know, any kind of reservoir that you, you know, you need to suck something out. I think it works great for that at the current moment, but for bleeding brakes, it sucks right now. 
but I don't really have a proper working system here to really gauge it on yet. So I'm going to go get that master cylinder, and then here in a few, I'll tell you what I think of this power brake bleeder. Well, it's not power, it's air powered, whatever. So I don't know. Got to get off here, go up there to the store, and get this master cylinder. Okay, we're back in the garage, and the master cylinder's put on, the brakes are bled, and let's talk about the brake bleeding tool. Well, let's first start off there. It's the new master cylinder all filled up and ready to go. All the tires are still off this vehicle. We just got done bleeding it, and we have a tool mess. But let's talk about this little guy right here. This, this little fine contraption. Air goes in, you pull on the handle, and it sucks through here. Well, I really didn't use this because it didn't, I didn't like how it went in there because if you vibrate this thing around a little bit, you would see different, you know, the suction on it was different. So I just pulled it off here and then I used, put this piece on the bleeder. Now to talk about this tool a little bit, it gets the, okay, it's okay. It's not going to bleed your brakes fully, but it will get your fluid back to where it needs to go. And then you, I feel you still need to properly bleed it. Two man system. Me, I did it by myself. This is how I did it. I've got a bar in there against the seat. This is an old ratted out car. You look dense, scratches, front ends wrecked a little bit, but yeah, I got a bar against the seat and pushed up against the brake pedal, and that's how I bled it. But that little system right there, it it's okay. It's not great. It's not like, yeah, because it's a tree harbor freight tool. It can only do so much. Now, it's going to serve its purpose here in the garage. It's, it's going to help me out in certain situations like this one, not needing somebody to be here to help me bleed the brakes. I still had to do kind of my pain in the butt process. There's another one where you can put it down into a Mountain Dew bottle and, uh, and then pump the brakes and then lock it up. But I kind of like to do it the traditional way with the brake pedal because you can see the fluid. And that's the other nice thing about that is I really didn't have a mess on the garage floor other than the mess that I created by being aggravated. But I can break that bleeder loose, watch the fluid go into the tube, and then I can see the air bubbles as they were going into the tube. Okay, we're not blood yet. Repeat process. Pump, pump, pump. Lock in the brake pedal. Come out. Yeah, it's a lot of work, but there's nobody here to help me. So I got to figure out things to do it on my own, and that's the best way I can do it without help. I could have had this done probably way quicker, but you got to have the help. That is the video, and I am very happy that this car will now finally be getting out of the garage, because I think I'm going to go pick up a Toyota uh, RAD4, looks like a wheel bearing, so that's probably the next thing to come up, but first I have to go turn the woman's car down to her so I can get my car and get the receipts and tell this kid, this is how much the parts bills was, so come pick up your vehicle and give me my money for the parts and get it out of here so i'm finally happy to say this is a job well done and now it's out of here so thank god so the video is what it is and comment rate subscribe and i will catch you on the flip side so later on